Hello, thanks for joining me today. My name is Sofian again, and I'm the Business Development Manager for Precision Analog at TEI here in Silicon Valley. Last time where I left you word, uh, with was uh, basically the TIPD, TI Precision Design Reference. That's an extensive documentation for reference design, essentially, uh, that talks about the ADS-8881, TI's newest SAR ADC that provides 18 bits of resolution and one mega sample per second. So we left off talking about the input driver. We talked about the anti-aliasing filters. As a matter of fact, I'd like to pick up where we left off, which is really the anti-aliasing filter component choices. So we talked about having chosen the capacitor. Um, it worked out to be 1.18 nanofarad, if you remember, all right, to minimize the droop. And we said attenuate any kind of charge kickback for noise purposes, in other words, to minimize the noise from the kickback of the SAR ADC. What we didn't say was we didn't get to basically talk about the R, in other words, the resistor that forms the RC, the low pass filter. So the R, what you want to do is you want to pick a value that's basically between, it's in, a, in other words, it's greater than the switch of the ADS8881 divided by 9 and less, okay, than the output impedance divided by 10. How do we get those two values? Well, the switch, we can look in a data sheet for the output impedance. Likewise, we should have a plot in a data sheet, and we do. So we look at the frequency response of that plot, in other words, the um, open loop output impedance of the ADS8881, and it turns out to be 90 ohms. So when we do the math very quickly, it works out that R needs to be about 10 ohms. So now we take that 10 ohms and that 1.18 nanofarad capacitor, and my frequency now, my cutoff, in other words, is 800 kilohertz. All right, so how can you calculate these RCE values in a very efficient way? Easy. You go to this Excel sheet that I provided here for you, and you have a pull-down menu from which you can select your part, and your part means the SAR ADC. So these are all SAR ADCs. You pick any one you like, and the tool actually fetches the data for you, in other words, the RC, based on the full-scale voltage range, based on the acquisition time of the ADC, and other parameters such as bandwidth, input noise density, et cetera, et cetera. So please use it at will, and I think you'll appreciate this. Moving on to, besides the RC filter, what is it that we can talk about? Well, there's the input driver. And the good news is that for this particular design, for the ADS8881, we have taken the time to create piece spice models, complete piece spice models, um, for the whole signal chain, basically. And this one here, make sure that we do have a stable system. Last thing you want is to have instability introduced into your system. So we simulate, we get uh, the target, which is more than 60% of phase margin, uh, 20 dB of uh, rate of closure. We get a very good frequency response and all in check, and we move on to the next section. And by next section, meaning the noise performance. So now we have to address the noise performance of the input driver. What we do is, again, we simulate, and we get essentially the RMS value. It works out to be, in this case, 36 microvolts RMS. All right? So that's about 37% of the voltage RMS noise of the ADC. All right? For the reference driver design, here are some of the requirements. First of all, there's an element of accuracy. That's to minimize the variation with time and fast load transients. There's an element of DC precision which basically encompasses low offset, low drift, and low noise. And then filtering, no surprise there, okay? We're gonna choose a snubber network to maintain the dynamic range because remember, we're operating at low voltages, namely five volts. So the reference design driver noise contribution, let's analyze this. We talked about this earlier, much in the same way, it's RSS fashion, a root sum square of summation, that is RSS fashion. <coughs> Okay, so everything under the square root and everything is squared up with the bandwidth and then, of course, the pi over 2 factor, which is 1.57. So we need to keep this at under 12 microvolts, RMS that is. And when we do this, we run into a little bit of a problem. Why is that? Because for the reference, we can get the one of ref that's listed on a data sheet. We can't really have access, at least in this case, we, can't, we don't have access to the broadband, the white noise. In other words, the spectral density. So we don't really have access to that broadband. What do we do? Well, we know there's an inverse proportionality rule between what? 
current consumption, quiescent current, power consumption, and what? And noise. So that's what we do. We look essentially for what? For something that can give us a high current consumption, a high quiescent current, so we'll know that by that we'll get a lower noise. That's a broadband noise. All right. Establishing that relationship and cranking to the equation listed on your screen or your presentation, we basically pick, we solve for the 3 dB, the noise, and we get a value. All right. So we select this particular device called the REF 5045, which has an IQ, that's the quiescent current, of about a milliamp. All right. So a milliamp is good enough because it doesn't really degrade the power budget of the entire system, and yet at the same time, it gives me the performance I want. I want. Furthermore, it actually gives me the stability in terms of drift and in terms of accuracy. So this particular guy here, the 5045, will give me a drift of 3 ppm per degree Celsius. Okay? It also gives me good accuracy, at least good enough for this design certainly, which is basically 4.5 volts at 0.05% output. All right. So that's what I do here. All in all, when I sum these up, I end up with a broadband noise of roughly 220. So it's exactly 223 nanovolts per root hertz. That's broadband density. And then the one of RAF turns out to be 13.5 microvolts peak to peak. And if I solve for the reference, uh, in other words, the uh, 3 dB frequency, then I get basically 230, call it 234. It's exactly 234.5 kilohertz. That's how I solve for that from the equation uh, that you saw on the screen earlier. All right? And then, of course, the rest of it is a matter of conversions uh, from RMS to peak to peak or vice versa. It's a matter of either dividing or multiplying by 6.6. .6. So now you go and divide by 6.6, .6, you get less than 12 microvolts RMS. All right? To pick the snubber network, in other words, the filter, the resistor, you also do the 1 over 2 pi RC. And so your bandwidth, your limiting bandwidth for the filter uh, will give you uh, an R of 679 ohms. So why not pick 1 kilo ohm? And that's exactly what we do. We pick 1 kilo ohm, the next value. For the load regulation in terms of the driver reference, keep in mind um, that you're going to have basically you can have load regulation problems, and the idea is to avoid any kind of transients, uh, which would cause the VREF to droop, okay? Because in that case, if VREF has an error in excess of one LSB, then you're basically going to have to make some adjustments, all right, and pick a different uh, VREF. And we just saw that the process of picking the actual voltage reference isn't really a trivial task. It's quite demanding, as a matter of fact. So be careful with that need to make sure that you maintain everything below, matter of fact, well below 1 LSB if you can help it, which is what we do in our design also. All right? So all in all, for the, for the load regulation, same thing here. We have the buffer, and we have our uh, cap load. We have, of course, our snubber network and the ADS8881. Uh, what we need to remember is that the buffer capacitor at the output of the buffer needs to be, uh, or multiplied by the charge, multiplied by the voltage rather, needs to be greater than 2 thirds Q of ref. In other words, the charge of the reference voltage. Okay, So when we crank through the math, we actually end up with a, a 10 microfarad value for the capacitor. And that's what the, what the math tells me. So we use the 10 microfarad in, in this case. Thank you for watching this edition. I will see you next time to talk in more details about the rest of the circuit, circuit for the TI reference design around the ADS 8881.